Hi, and welcome to the DROPRO segment on installing a magnetic digital readout kit onto a lathe. Now, this video is a third of a four-part series and shows you how to install a magnetic scale onto the carriage or the z-axis of your lathe. Now, if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I would suggest watching them now because each video builds on the previous segment's material. All right, so let's get back to our lathe and install the z-axis scale. Now, the first thing we need to do is to remove the splash guard. But before we do, we need to mark the outline of the splash guard on the back of the lathe to ensure we don't mount the scale where it might later interfere with reinstalling the splash guard. So now we'll remove the splash guard. And here on the back of the lathe is where we'll mount the scale. Of course, the goal here is to mount the scale between the splash guard marks here on the left and over here on the right. And it's quite common to have several ridges or castings sticking up here on the back of the lathe, which would preclude us from mounting a scale directly against the surface. Now, fortunately for us, the back of this lathe is quite smooth, so we should have no problem mounting our scale directly against the back of it. Now, if your lathe does have any castings or ridges that the scale needs to pass over, these here are the mounting blocks that you would first mount to the back of the lathe, and then you'd mount your scale directly on top of them. But again, for this installation, we don't need to use them so we'll just put these to the side. Now the reed head assembly will mount to the back of the carriage here. And if we look closely, we can see a stop plate on the back of the saddle. Okay, so let's go over to our bench and take a look at which parts are going to make this happen. Now this large block over here is the bracket we'll use to replace the stop plate on the back of the carriage that we looked at just a moment ago. Now, if your lathe doesn't have a stop plate like ours does, then you probably wouldn't use this bracket and you'd simply mount the vertical adjusting bracket directly to the back of this saddle. Now, either way, the most important point here is to be creative. You simply use and carve up the brackets as you see fit. And remember, there's no one particular way to install a digital readout. Okay, so we also have this vertical adjusting bracket, and it mounts to the back of the stop plate bracket like this. And then we also have the horizontal T bracket, which mates underneath the vertical adjusting bracket like that. All right, so let's bring these parts over to the lathe. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is to remove the stop plate that we saw earlier. So let's go ahead and hold the brackets up to the back of the lathe. And when I do, I can see here that the thickness of the new stop plate bracket basically places the reed head T bracket here too far away from the back of the lathe. In other words, the stop plate bracket is too thick and it looks like I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit shorter. Now the alternative here is to not use the stop plate bracket at all. 
Instead, what I could do is to simply drill two holes right about here and simply mount the vertical adjusting bracket right up against the back of the lathe. And if I did that, you can see that the T-bracket now has plenty of room to adjust in and out and would give me the clearance that I need. Now, the problem with doing that is that it means that I need to drill and tap two more holes. And if I can avoid doing that, I'd like to. So to me, it looks like the easier route is to shorten the stop plate bracket about say 20 millimeters or so and then see how everything fits together. All right, so I'm back with the modified stop plate bracket. I reduced the height of it by about 20 millimeters and if you look closely here, I also opened up or slotted the holes a little bit. So let's go ahead and bolt it up and see how everything fits together. So next, I'll attach the vertical adjusting bracket. And on top of here is where the reed head will mount. But before we attach the reed head, let's take a look at where the scale will mount. And here's the scale, so let's go ahead and slide it into position. And the first thing I notice is that it's a little bit too long. It looks like it's extending into the area on the left side here where the splash guard mounts probably about three inches. In other words, we need to cut the scale a little bit shorter. So let's go back to our cutting scales worksheet two axis lathe and see if we can cut this scale a little bit shorter. Now we already measured the carriage travel at 29 and a half inches, so we'll write that in as the z-axis travel. And next, we need to measure max length, or the longest possible scale that would conveniently fit on the back of our lathe. Let's go take a look. So here on the back of our lathe, we'll measure the longest distance that's available to mount the scale without interfering with remounting the splash guard. And it looks like we had about 43 inches to mount the scale, so we'll write that in for max length. And then moving down a line, we'll write in 29 and a half inches as our z-axis travel. So we'll add four inches to that for a total of 33 and a half inches, or z-min. Now for the next line, we'll take our max length of 43 inches from above minus 3 quarters of an inch, which would make Z max equal to 42 and 1 quarter inches. Okay, so now the math is completed, let's go ahead and mark the scale. And just like before, first we need to transcribe the hash marks from the stainless steel strip over to the shoulder of the scale. Next, we'll remove the cap screws from the opposite end of the scale.
we'll remove the stainless steel strip. And now we mark the scale according to the worksheet. Now, the shortest we want to cut the scale is Z min, which we calculated to be 33 and a half inches. So let's go ahead and mark that in red. And the longest we want to cut the scale, Z max, is 42 and a quarter inches. So let's mark that in green. And so, here we are again. Now the shortest we want to cut the scale is marked here in red. The longest we want to cut the scale is marked in green. Anywhere between the two marks is fine, but remember, DroPros always recommends favoring a longer scale. And remember, never cut a scale shorter than the red mark or Z min. Okay, and just like before, now we're ready for the fun part, cutting the scale. All right, so now that we're done cutting the scale, let's reassemble it. And the first thing we need to do is to reinsert the stainless steel strip, making sure to insert the hash mark end first so that the hash marks on the scale line up with the hash marks on the stainless steel strip. like that. Next, we'll mark the stainless steel strip where we need to cut it. Back it out a bit. And then cut the strip. Next, I'll tap the holes for the end cap screws. And to do that, I'll be using an M3 by 0.5 plug tap. Next, I'll tap the other hole. Now I'll bolt on the end cap. And here's our finished carriage scale. 
Now, before we attach it to our lathe, we first need to attach the reed head to the T-bracket. So to do that, we need the M4 by 20 millimeter socket head cap screws. So let's grab those and go to the lathe. Now, this is where we last left off with the T-bracket secured to the vertical adjusting bracket. And I think you'll probably find it's easiest to first remove the T-bracket, then attach the reed head, and then reattach the T-bracket back to the vertical adjusting bracket. At least, that's our recommendation, so that's the way I'll be doing it. Okay, so now that that's done, we need to know exactly where we should mount the scale. Now, if you remember from mounting the cross slide scale, a good technique is to first move your lathe all the way to one extreme end of your travel and then mount the scale so the reed head is just inside the end of the scale. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start by moving the carriage all the way down to the tailstock end until it hits the stop. So just like before, let's put some mounting tape on the back of the scale. All right, so here I am at the back of the lathe with the scale, and what I want to do is just put it approximately in place and basically put the reed head right up against the groove of the scale. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to move the carriage to the midpoint of the lathe. All right, so now that the carriage is out of the way, what I want to do is take a measurement between the top of the scale and the bottom of the way here. And what this is giving me is a measurement of approximately four inches. What I'll do is I want to set the other end of the scale approximately the same distance, or in this case, four inches away from the bottom of the way. So basically what we're doing here is we're going back and forth readjusting either end of the scale until both are equidistant from the top. And this looks pretty good right now. So for one final check, I'll run the carriage all the way to both ends of the lathe, not only to check the rough alignment of the scale, but also to make sure the reed head doesn't hit the end caps of the scale. Alright, so we've moved the carriage to both ends of the scale, and at both extreme ends, the reed head remains centered to the scale. So, I think this position is going to work for us. So, let's go ahead and mount the scale by first drilling the 3.3 millimeter pilot holes. Next, I'll remove the scale. And now I'll tap both ends with the M4 by 0.7 plug tap. 
right, so now we're finally ready to mount the scale. I'll use the M4 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws. And before I mount the scale, there's one more thing that I want to consider. On the reed head, the hash marks were on the underside of the reed head against the bottom of the bracket or the T bracket. Now on the scale, the hash marks here have to be coincidental with what's on the reed head. So with the hash marks on the reed head towards the bottom, I also want to mount the scale with the hash marks towards the bottom. So this is how I'll orient the scale. I'll slide it in here and let's go ahead and bolt it on. Now remember, because we're not mounting the scale to a machine surface like the cross slide scale was, we need to check both the face of the scale and the side of the scale. Now just to give me a little bit more room to work with, I'm going to remove the vertical adjusting bracket and the reed head. Now just to be clear, the only reason for the reed head to be in place was to give me an indication of where I needed to mount the scale. But now that that's done, leveling the scale will be a lot easier with them out of the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove the reed head and get the dial indicator hooked up. All right, so I've zeroed the dial, and next I'll run the carriage back and forth to see if the height of the face is level. And I can see here that the headstock end is a little bit higher than the tailstock end. So what I'll do is I'll let out the grub screws a little bit and bring the scale into alignment. Alright, so that looks pretty good. And next, we need to check whether the edge of the scale is in alignment. I'll reposition my dial indicator against the bottom surface of the scale and then zero out the dial. So next, I'll move the carriage just like before to check the alignment. Now I can see that the dial is increasing as I move towards the tailstock end, so to correct that I'll loosen this end of the scale and adjust it up and down to zero out the dial. 
and that should do it. But just to make certain, let's go ahead and move the carriage back and forth just to double check it. Okay, so that looks a lot better. I brought the dial indicator to both ends of the scale and now the deflection is right at zero. So now officially the deflection needs to be less than 0.1 millimeters for every meter traveled and of course we want to get that dialed in as close to zero as possible. And not surprisingly what you have to do here is to keep going back and forth between adjusting the scale and then rechecking your results. Now, inevitably, you'll probably get some deflection, especially with the longer scales. Now, just remember, all you need to do is to keep it within specs and you'll be just fine. All right, so at this point, we've trued our scale up and just like before, now we need to set the gap between the reed head and the scale. Probably a little bit hard without the reed head in place, so for next, let's go ahead and reinstall the reed head. Okay, so now with the reed head back in place, let's slide the shim between the reed head and the scale, remembering our technique from before to leave a little bit extra hanging out the end. Now, this time, all I need to do is to adjust the T-bracket in and out until I get the correct spacing between the reed head and the scale. Next, I'll slide the shim out, again making sure that the shim is snug, but not binding. And that feels pretty good. And next, we'll make a final run of the carriage through its full travel, left and right. And just like before, we need to make sure the reed head doesn't bind or dig into the stainless steel cover. Now remember, check all the way to both ends, full travel. Now for the scale cover, we're going to use the same technique as we did for the cross slide cover. That is, we'll mount the cover directly to the end caps rather than to the machine. If you remember from before, the advantage of this technique is that it saves you from having to drill and tap two more holes into your lathe. Now here's the stock cover and just like before, I'm going to first shave off this top tab. I'll shorten the overall length of the cover. I'll drill two holes on either end of the cover to enable me to mount the cover directly to the end caps. And finally, I'll shorten the length of this overhang to about half as much as we have now. Okay, back to the mill for some more modifications. All right, so we're back now and here's the modified cover. I've shortened it. I've removed the tab that used to be at the top here. I've drilled these two holes on either end so that we can mount it directly to the end caps. And I've removed quite a bit of the overhang that used to be up front here. All right, so let's install it. Oh, and just like before, we'll be using the lower profile button head screws to attach it to the end caps. <laughs> 
Alright, so that concludes the installation of the carriage scale, so let's go ahead and put the splash guard back on. Alright, so now it's time to move on to installing the display head.